Alright, hey guys, uh, I had made this new sub that I had made it out of my subwoofer headphones. I sacrificed those and also I sacrificed my two stereo speakers for this. And the way I did this is I built your basic frame. Uh, this thing's about four and a half inches across. Uh, right now, this came from the bottom of a paper plate, and the shaft is a, a CD album cover. And I have my cool running down in there. And then this green around it is uh, the tape that I used to hold the stereo speakers together. And the motor for the stereo speakers, I used as the bottom plate. And the motor sticking out, I just needed a flat piece, so I went ahead and used this. And down inside of, uh, you can't really see it, down inside the two stereo speakers is my neodymium magnets. I have them set down in there, and it leaves a pretty small gap. And those neodymium magnets are my motor, and also have magnetism on both sides because I have the two stereo magnets on the outside of them and they're all mounted onto the little plate right here and these arms right here are uh, little metal pieces that are the labeling for award plaques that I got from my art teacher and those are the supports and the spider I'm probably gonna have to uh, add another rubber band to it like I usually do but the spider is just a rubber band shaft running up it I hot glued the uh, rubber bands to the shaft to hold it in place and diaphragm's paper plate and this outer rim that way I can mount it is for well from one of my stereo speakers and I got my wires running off of it and it's running into my amp right over here and right now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it does on 20 hertz and this is pretty good because usually homemade speakers cannot hit 20 hertz which is pretty awesome because mine goes down to 20 one sec and then this is a song playing it's Disloyal by Ace Hood and, it, and it's decaf music I get it from ramdesigns.com uh, it's a pretty good place if you want to get decaf music that's made for subs. And with the name of it, it also tells you the hertz that it hits at. And this is my sub right now. It'd be better. Yeah, here, let me put my shadow over. It. Ah. But I'm probably gonna draw some black lines on it so that you can actually see it flexing whenever it uh, hits the base. But because it's solid white, solid white, and there's this uh, my lamp over here, uh, kind of makes it hard to see it. But. But that's the sub. And to show you that this isn't just another speaker plan. Can I get this right here? You see my sub? Here's the wires running off of it, right? And here's the wire coming off of my amp right here. And whenever I disconnect it, no music. So whenever I reattach it, music. And this all runs into my amp. That's me splicing the wire out there. There's a copper wire running into stereo wire. And stereo wire. Right here. 
runs. Uh, it runs all the way into this one right here. And as you can see, it leads over to my amp. And then whenever I disconnect them, no music. Connect them, music. So that's just basically saying, hey, this is my sub. I made it myself. I'm not one of those people who build stuff and use speakers behind in the background or to make it sound like they built something really cool. I spend hours making mine. And this one right here, the magnets around it, uh, the stereo magnets, if you were to buy those actual magnets, they'd probably be about five bucks for those two. And then for the neodymium magnets in it, it'd cost, I'd say like $4 for the neodymium magnets. And then if you just get random materials around your house, not much, but... Uh, really cheap so you're looking at a, about an average of ten dollars for this sub to make it and if you were to actually sell a sub like this, this and if, if it was actually cleaned up and didn't look so gnarly you could probably sell it for about 40 50 bucks but it's pretty good And simple, cheap, easy way to make one. It's not that hard. It's your basic speaker design. I've been using the same design for all of my speakers, and the subs built the same way, except your coil hovers uh, below, well, above the bottom plate, so that whenever it flexes, here's your plate, here's your coil, and whenever it flexes and it gets yanked down, it doesn't hit it and whenever it hits it it bottoms out and eventually it crushes your coil and then you'll it'll start grabbing on to whatever magnets or anything you have down there and whenever it grabs on to it it'll stop moving it'll be really quiet and you don't want that to happen because it'll mess it up pretty bad so you want it to hover and right now mine can hit 20 hertz without bottoming out which is really good considering I'm just running off of a small amp and also uh, is a homemade sub too. So that's really good. 20 hertz. Uh, the lower the hertz, that means the better it is. Uh, and that's about it right now. And if you want, you can copy my design if you want I don't really care it's not a patent design it's just hey basic speaker design but there you go get your magnets get an outside one the middle magnets you can use as your motor that's what the coil grabs onto to keep it uh, from flying everywhere and have a bottom plate attach it to it and then have your coil that's slightly bigger than your motor and then have your shaft running up, have your uh, have your support arms running up off of it, and then get your rubber band for your spider, attach it to your shaft, so that whenever it flexes, it doesn't go down and stay there or fly out and stay out. Uh, and then thin paper plate for the diaphragm and just the mount for a stereo speaker well yeah for a stereo speaker cut it off the basket and then you can mount it and well bam you get a homemade subwoofer loud homemade cheap cheap's the thing and it averages about 40 bucks if you're to sell a sub about that big and that's real good I'll see y'all later and hopefully I'll have some more videos on here uh, here pretty soon.